Hi, my name is Nikki Gould. I'm the registered dietitian at Vital Choice Health Store in North Royalton. I'm so excited to be a part of the Back to School Perfect Storm Virtual Summit. Of course, I'm going to be talking all about nutrition and how we could really fuel our kids and their brains to give them the most success this year when they go back to school. So what we're going to talk about, the influence food has on your child's physical and mental health. We're going to talk about what a brain healthy diet looks like, and I'm going to give you practical tips to improve the diet. And finally, we'll talk about supplements for stress and immune support. I always like to start with this quote, food is not just calories, it is information. It talks to your DNA and tells it what to do. The most powerful tool to change your health, environment, and entire world is your fork. I think we just need to take a second to think about that. It may sound a little uh, over the top, but we forget the power that what we put into our bodies has on us and on our health, and it truly can be transformative if we're eating the right things. What's fueling your child? Foods can either help us, they can improve our energy, improve the immune health, aid in healing, support stress response, and actually improve mood, focus, and learning. But foods can also harm your child and cause things like energy crashes and fatigue. Harmful foods can suppress the immune system. It can cause inflammation, contribute to more stress, and decrease mood and disrupt focus. So it's all about this balance and, and hoping that we have more of the foods that help us and, and less of the foods that are harming your child. This image is pretty powerful to me, what's fueling your child? You know, if you look on the left, those are the foods that help us. If we look on the right, this is more indicative of a standard American diet and most likely what most of our children are eating or at least want to eat. The worst foods for the brain, for stress, for immune health, for the whole body are processed foods and sugars. These foods offer very little actual nutrition. So what happens is you eat them or your child eats them. They're very high in calories, but the brain is, and the cells are starving basically because they're thinking, hey, you didn't really give me anything I can use, so give me some more. And then they become highly addictive and they harm us. They cause that inflammation. They suppress the immune system. They actually set us up for chronic diseases. If you think about the fact that type 2 diabetes used to be called adult onset, we had to change the name because too many kids were getting it because too many kids were eating these processed, still are eating these processed foods and sugars. Um, that's one of the major diseases that comes out of eating these foods. Certain things like uh, dementia and certain cancers and heart disease and bone issues, those are some others that, that are fueled by these types of foods. Um, processed foods and sugars also disrupt the gut microbiome. And there's a big connection between the brain and the gut. So what we put into our stomachs, what we put into our system, talks to our brain. Um, and that's done a lot through our gut microbes, these little bugs. In fact, 90% of the serotonin is actually made in our gut, not in our brain, where we always thought, oh, all of these uh, neurotransmitters and these feel-good chemicals, they're made up here. No, a lot of them are made either mostly or in part in the gut. So when you have these processed foods, when you have these sugars, it really is detrimental to our gut health and then in turn causes mood issues and causes stress. And they also suppress the immune system. So it's really important to reduce as many of these foods as possible. Um, if you look at this image on the screen, I often find myself doing this when I go to a grocery store. I'll like stand at the aisle, and it could be the chip aisle, it could be the cereal aisle, it could be the cookie and cracker aisle, but it's like aisle after aisle of just nothing but processed foods. We have so many chip flavors, it needs its own aisle in a grocery store. And I just think that says a lot about um, the foods that we eat, the foods we crave, the foods we buy, and the foods that we feed our children. Um, those are the foods we want to stay away from as much as possible, or at least, you know, eliminate and balance with some of the good stuff. What are those good things? Of course, vegetables. This is no, no secret. Leaders in children's health help all agree that vegetables should make a large part of the diet. And 
really, it does not matter if I'm talking to someone about cognitive issues and dementia, or if I'm talking to someone about arthritis, heart disease, whatever it is, vegetables should always be the base. There really isn't a condition out there that I would say, you know, you know what, you should probably eat many, much less vegetables and increase your processed foods. It doesn't happen. Um, and yet, only one in 10 Americans are getting enough, and kids are getting even less than the adults. Of that one in 10 Americans, they're eating a lot of the starchy potatoes, or starchy vegetables, like potatoes and corn. Those are the most consumed choices. Those are the vegetables that have some of the least valuable nutrition to them. There's research out there that shows vegetables can increase mood, decrease anxiety, improve the immune system, and decrease stress. Now, if I told you there was a pill out there that could do all of those things, I have a pill with no side effects, and it will increase your mood, decrease stress, and give you a better immune system. Everyone would be knocking down my door to get it. But the answer really is food here. You know, more vegetables and more of what we're missing. So you're probably thinking, okay, I know that. Everybody knows vegetables are good for us. This is not revolutionary information. Um, but getting your kids to eat them, that's, that's the tough thing. The younger, the better. If your child is, is still very young and just maybe you're starting to introduce foods or they're still young enough that you have a lot of control, I highly encourage you to make the conscious effort to feed them mostly vegetables. They will get used to it. They will grow up loving them, and that will continue for the rest of their lives. Um, if your child is already at a point where it, they're not as easily persuaded to uh, eat vegetables or they might be a little bit on the picky side, there are still some things you can do. So there's, these are six tips that I've come up with that can really help your child eat more vegetables and even like them. So the first one is talk about it. Kids are naturally curious. They want to know the why about everything. So give them the why. Don't just say, eat your vegetables or, you know, you're grounded or eat your vegetables and no video games. Tell them why. Say, you know, we're going to start incorporating more vegetables. This is why. Vegetables are really good for us. They help nourish our brains and support our bodies. If your kids don't care about that, talk about, you know, different colored vegetables having different superpowers. There's calcium and broccoli, and that makes your bones are really strong and, and, you know, you can be a lot stronger from that or, you know, eat more carrots and you'll have better sight. You can see a lot farther like an eagle. Um, you can talk about peppers having a lot of vitamin C. It keeps you from getting sick. So sometimes it may just be about speaking their language and what's important to them. Um, I have a client that, um, you know, she was telling me about her kid and to, to get him to eat more vegetables, she said, if you eat more of these, you'll be better at your video games. And I thought, wow, that's a really creative approach. I don't know that I would have thought of that, but it worked and he really believed in it. And hey, he's eating more vegetables. So I'm, I'm certainly fine with that. Um, if they're older, you can talk about vegetables improving skin and hair and maybe some more physical things that are important to them, making them stronger, making them more athletic. These are all true statements. These are all facts about vegetables. Um, we just, don't always uh, equate those benefits to vegetables. One caution, though, never make it about weight. Um, no matter what age they are, um, that's a really important thing that can do a lot more damage if you focus on weight versus all of the health benefits of vegetables. The second one is a biggie. It's be a role model. How many times I have, uh, you know, parents wanting their kids to eat more vegetables, and I'll say, well, tell me about what you eat. And they'll go, well, I don't, I don't eat, I don't really like them, never did, I eat some of them. You've got to be a role model. The kids are watching, they're mimicking, they want to do what their parents or whoever they're living with um, is doing, and they tend to adopt the eating habits of those around them. So you want to make sure that you're being a good example and, you know, reaching for an extra serving of veggies or grabbing some for a quick snack, letting them see you enjoy them, talk about them. They may even come over and ask for a bite. Who knows? Anything can happen. So that's, that's number two. Number three is get them involved. Whether you want to start your own garden together and grow um, different vegetables, microgreens, get some good microgreen seeds. Those are really easy to grow. They grow quickly and you can grow them indoors. Um, so that's a fun one and you just basically, you can cut them, 
give them a little rinse and eat them straight. They're a very mild type of vegetable. If you get like a broccoli microgreen or kale microgreen, they're very um, tender and you don't have to do a lot with them. Um, don't cook them, you just eat them raw. So that's one that you can grow. Or you can take your kids shopping with you, take them to a market, have them pick out what they want to eat. Don't say, do you want vegetables tonight? Say, which would you prefer? Let's go look. Look at all these colors. There's purple cabbage and purple cauliflower and all these different colored rainbow carrots and different colored peppers. And, you know, get them excited about that and, and allowing them to pick it out themselves. They could prep it with you. They can help you in the kitchen, you know, if it's age appropriate and help you cook or prepare things. They will be much more likely to eat it if they were involved or had any control um, or say in the process. So that's an important one as well. Number four is make it fun. You can cut things up. You can make little veggie kebabs with straws if they're very young or with the wooden skewers if they're older and can handle it. Um, it's funner when food just is on a stick that they can pick up and munch on. Um, you can arrange things on the plate. You know, you can make little faces out of the veggies. You can make little figures and designs and stand the broccoli and cauliflower up like little trees. Or you can arrange it and have a rainbow of different vegetables and arrange it in a rainbow. And they'll be excited about that. You've got to make it a little bit fun, especially if they're younger. Number five, keep trying. If they don't like something once, keep trying. Don't force it on a child give them the opportunity to taste it again. Um, kids are really funny. They go through like phases of pickiness and they, they hate something for a week. And then if you introduce it again, they might say, oh, I, I think I like that. Let me, let me try it again. Or make it different ways. Roast things instead of introducing it raw or boiled or steamed. You know, try to add different herbs and spices and, and flavor it if, it if it's about the flavor. If they don't like it, ask them why. If it's the texture, you can cook it differently. If it's the flavor, you could add different things to it to make it taste differently. So um, don't give up. Always keep reintroducing and encouraging them. And one day they will surprise you and actually try it themselves and, and maybe like it. Number six, add it to something that they like. This is a way that not necessarily sneaking it in, but you're just adding it into something that they like to eat already. So it could be mixing in cauliflower rice, which is just basically just really finely grated cauliflower in with regular rice. They may or may not know it's even there because it's white, it's small, like the shape of rice. Um, and that's another way to get some veggies in. You could spiralize zucchini and add it in with their pasta or do spaghetti squash in with regular noodles um, as a way to incorporate that. Or you can add broccoli to mac and cheese. You can Add more veggies by cooking them into things like pasta. You could grate some carrots and celery and cook them into pastas. You could add spinach into burgers or sauces and soups and stews are great ways that you could sneak a lot, cut them up real small and throw them in. And you can, you can get the kids to eat more vegetables without them really even paying attention to it. So hopefully those tips will, will give you success if you're having trouble with uh, giving your child or them liking to eat vegetables. What is a great diet for kids? Um, same one that I give to adults. <laughs> Again, avoiding those processed foods and sugars as much as possible. And I wanna point out for a second, when I say processed foods, that's anything that comes in a box or a carton that has a can that has multiple ingredients in it, um, that's what constitutes a processed food. So you probably figure, you know, pretzels and chips and Pop-Tarts and those types of foods are processed foods. You get that. Um, sugar, of course, you, you know what that is. But many people think that foods like granola bars and yogurt are not processed, but those foods are processed as well. So there are better versions of those foods. Cereals is another big category where, you know, the cereals that are marketed to kids are insane to me, full of chemicals, full of dyes and full of sugar and not much that they could use. And that's how they start their day. A big bowl of empty calories and no nutrition. Their brains cannot survive that. They're not going to do as well in school. And they're going to be more stressed with fueling them that way. So look for better options. In the cereal department, I like brands like Cascadian Farms or Nature's Path. They tend to, as a whole, just have a little bit better options. Those cereal, again, still a processed food. Granola bars are usually a massive source of sugar. So just be careful with those foods. 
You could even keep a food diary for a few days of what your kid was eating. Circle all the times that they ate something that was prepackaged or a packaged processed food. And you might see, hopefully not, but you may see a lot more processed foods than you really realized. Processed beverages fall into that category as well. So sodas and juices and sports drinks, count those as processed as well. Um, another good diet of eating, of course, vegetables. I talked about those. Ideally, you can be eating uh, at least a serving or two of something green. It doesn't have to be something as strong as kale. It could be lettuce. It could be spring mix. It could be spinach. Whatever it is, those microgreens, like I mentioned, you could find those in the prepackaged aisle of a lot of grocery stores. Um, and that will be wonderful at, at getting them to eat some greens. Berries are really nutritious. So out of all the fruit, there's a lot of fruit out there. Um, I, I think that berries hands down are the most nutritious because fruit does contain sugar, but blueberries, raspberries, blackberries, strawberries, what do you think of when you think of those fruits? Very dark, deep color. And that's really important because where there's dark, deep color, there's a lot of nutrition. So a couple of servings, if they're gonna have fruit, of berries. Are apples okay? Is watermelon or bananas okay? Of course, those are all okay. But if you could at least get a serving of the berries in, I think that's a really good brain food that, that can help them a lot. Incorporating healthy fats, our brains are, are made of fats. The developing child's brain needs more good fats. Not things like fried foods, not fats like, you know, canola oil and vegetable oils and corn oils, but truly good sources of fats, olive oils, avocados and avocado oil. Avocado oil is a great one to cook in if you're using high heat. It's got a very neutral flavor, but it, and it holds heat a lot better than olive oil does. Coconut oil, getting them to eat some nuts and seeds, pumpkin seeds or flax seeds or almonds and walnuts. All of those things are really good sources of, you know, there's some protein and fiber in those as well as really good fats. And of course, the biggie is wild fish. I'll talk more about omega-3s a little bit later, but that's the biggest reason wild fish are so important. And kids and adults alike are not getting the recommended three servings a week, sometimes not even one. So that's one to focus on if, if it's at all possible. And the wild fish that are most important are things like wild salmon, wild sardines, wild mackerel. These, these are very high in omegas, but lower in mercury and some other contaminants. The white fish tend not to be sources of omega-3. So if you're going to go out of your way and eat fish, try to make it a really good wild fatty fish. Spices, we forget how important and how nutrient-dense spices are. Turmeric and ginger are really good for inflammation. Rosemary as well and good for the uh, antioxidants that are in all of these spices, really. All of them are good, good sources of antioxidants. Cinnamon is great to throw on oatmeal in the morning or on a sweet potato. Saffron is great on fish. So there's a lot of great power in spices. Uh, take a look in your spice cabinet. I find that many people have had the same spices for 10 years. Maybe they even came with the spice wrap that you got at your wedding shower. Um, be careful with that. And, and it doesn't, it's a couple bucks to get some good quality organic spices. So I highly encourage you swapping some out for some, some more potent spices. But use them. Get your kids interested in that. And they can taste the difference that, you know, you can make different potatoes and put rosemary on one and basil on the next and some turmeric on the other one and, and get creative and have them try it and see what they like the best. You can do that with cauliflower as well. If you're eating meat, be careful with portions. We don't need nearly the amount of, of meat, animal protein that as we eat. So these like 20 ounce and 10 ounce portions is, is really not what we need. So again, your plate should be mostly vegetables, a little bit of, of good fats and maybe some starch, some healthy whole grain starches like quinoa or brown rice. Wild rice is another good one. And then a little pocket of, of animal protein if, that, if that's what you eat wild fish, organic turkey, organic chicken, grass-fed beef is actually anti-inflammatory, so much better than conventional. So, you know, play around with, with the protein and, and make sure it's really good quality. These lunch meats and hot dogs and pre-made processed meats, again, they fall into that processed category, so be careful. You can get better versions. Applegate Farms is a brand that does make better organic hot dogs and lunch meats. So if you're going to do those things, I at least 
would say get those, uh, get like an Applegate Farms brand because it will not contain some of the preservatives and chemicals that are just not doing our kids any good. Drink mostly water every day. That's one of my biggest pieces of nutrition advice at any age. Uh, there is no reason kids need juice, sports drinks, or soda unless they are, you know, heavily active for a couple hours. If they're at a tournament or they're a football player, then they may need to, to balance some of those electrolytes or add those back in. But majority of the time, I just see kids out there just sitting having, you know, playing a video game, sipping on a sports drink, and, and it's just not necessary. It's a lot of sugar. Sports drinks are a ton of sugar. So be really careful. They should be getting lots of water, six, eight glasses a day. If they're active, lots more. So make an effort to, to get rid of some of those other beverages and try to get more water in every day. So that's my nutrition tips. I'm going to move on to supplements. And supplements are really great for filling in gaps, but I always like to mention supplements are not a replacement for a good diet. All of the things that I mentioned in the slide previously are more important than adding supplements in. Supplements are meant to fill in gaps and add a little bit more support and benefit to things that you need. And I'm going to talk about some different supplements that could be beneficial for your child. But again, we've got to start with the basics. Get them drinking water, get them eating more, more vegetables and good quality nutrient-dense foods. Don't just look for a supplement to replace that because it can't. It will not replace a good diet. So start with the diet, but supplements have their place. They're certainly beneficial. You could start basics. We are so deficient in many different micronutrients, micronutrients like vitamins and minerals and antioxidants and fatty acids. And starting with a good quality multivitamin can be a, a great place to, to have a little bit of everything. If you don't know what your child's deficient in, you know, it kind of covers some bases without overdoing it. Any vitamin that's geared towards kids is not going to be very high in a lot of those different nutrients. I love mega food. Mega food is a whole food company and they make a lot of vegan products they are tested for herbicides and pesticides and they are whole food so the vitamins themselves actually are food form so they're very easy on the stomach if your child has ever had a stomach ache from a multivitamin the kids one daily from mega food is wonderful if your child cannot swallow a pill they can make it in a powder so it's another option that that you can add in but i love that one you get more when it's a tablet which this one is versus it being a chewable or a gummy certainly or um, a powder so that's why i have that one up there great for older kids then the nature's plus animal parade is a great option for someone that needs a chewable it, it is a it's like a cleaner version of a flintstone vitamin if you remember flintstone vitamins um, I do not suggest the Flintstones multivitamin. They're loaded with preservatives and dyes. But the Animal Parade has a similar taste and texture and comes in different flavors. And it, it's a cleaner, much cleaner version of that. Um, so the Animal Parade by Nature's Plus, again, a chewable tablet form um, that's going to cover your bases for children that cannot yet swallow a pill. You'll notice I did not put a gummy option on. While there are some gummy multivitamins out there, I really, again, try to avoid places where we're getting extra sugar. And most of the gummies are very small amounts of nutrition and a lot of sugar because they have to make them taste good. So, in fact, they taste so good, kids think they're candy and want to keep eating them. So I think it's important for your child to understand that a multivitamin is not candy. You want them to eat it or take it as a pill uh, without it becoming a treat for them. If that's the only way they'll take it, then by all means, there are some great gummies out there. But again, I try to avoid that extra sugar because kids are just getting too much of it as it is. What about stress and mood support? So there are some, some good ones, starting with omega-3. So I talked about wild fish being very important because of these omega fatty acids. Omega fatty acids improve mood, they find that those that are depressed or have anxiety issues are deficient in omega-3s. And quite honestly, our bodies cannot make omega-3s. So we have to eat them. If you are not eating wild fish, you're deficient or your child is deficient most likely. Um, 
plant foods, there are some plant foods that give us omegas, but they don't have the same level and they have to convert. So like a lot of, a lot of clients will ask me about flax oil and flax seeds and flax oil is a good source of omegas, but it's not a direct source of EPA and DHA. And those are the main parts of omega-3 that we really need and that our brain needs. So flax oil has to convert into something before it goes into those things and we lose a lot. We don't get a lot of benefit. If you are vegetarian or vegan, your child can do an algae-based oil. Nordic Naturals, the same company I have here on the screen for the Omega Focus and Children's DHA, they make an, a great quality algae oil that I would suggest giving a try. The Omega Focus Junior is great because it's a small, it's like a little mini soft shell. If the kid bites into it, that's okay. Actually, my kids like to bite into them. They, they get a kick out of it. They like the way it tastes. I don't know. Even I'm not doing that, but they like it. And the Omega Focus Junior has just some extra things in there, like phosphatidyl, uh, serine, and things to help with calming and attention. So you're getting the benefits of those fatty acids, those omega-3s, and then there's a little bit extra in there uh, to help with calming and focus. The children's DHA on the bottom there comes in a liquid, which I suggest because you get a lot more out of it for a half a teaspoon of the liquid. It's like equivalent to four of the mini soft gels of the children's DHA that they have in the soft gels. So if you can sneak it in them or if they're willing to take it, I, I like to put, you know, put it in a little medicine cup, throw, throw something else in there. If you have to do a little bit of honey or you can do um, some water just to make it go down easier, that's okay to at least get it down. Ideally, they would avoid that, but omega-3s are so important. I just think whatever ways we can get it in the child is best. Again, we're avoiding the gummies. When you read a label on a gummy omega-3, it is so low that to me it just doesn't, it's just not worth it. It's, you know, they're not getting very much and they're getting a ton of sugar because they're trying to mask that fish flavor. So be careful with gummies. There may be brands out there, just read labels and make sure it doesn't have a ton of sugar and that it has a significant amount of DHA. The one on the bottom has, um, I believe, 530 milligrams of omega-3. So we want high amounts, at least a 500 milligram of omega-3 for a child. The Wish Garden is a, a great brand. They make a whole line for kids. And this particular one on here called Quiet Time has a lot of passion flower in it. And passion flower is an herb that is very calming. So it's nice if you have maybe a more hyperactive child or they just have, have issues with stress and calming down. They're nervous or tense. Quiet time is nice to kind of settle them down. It's designed for kids. It's not made with alcohol. So, um, you know, it's not really flavored much with anything. So you could add it to something or just do it in a little medicine cup for them to take. But uh, that can be a great one for stress and anxiousness. Magnesium, the Natural Vitality Calm Kids is a magnesium powder. It tastes really good. It kind of fizzes as you mix it in water. It comes in a lot of different flavors. And most kids really enjoy taking the, the Calm product. It's a magnesium product. We are very, very deficient in magnesium because we're not eating a lot of the good nutrition that the foods that have that magnesium in them. And so our brain health, tension, stress, all of that is affected by magnesium. Magnesium is very calming physically and mentally. So if someone has you know, tightness in a muscle, like a muscle cramp or, or a you know, sore neck or they have a headache, magnesium kind of releases that and it does the same thing for stress. So if you're feeling anxious, if you're feeling like wired, calm, and magnesium can really help to soothe you and, and, and calm you and kind of release some of those anxious feelings. So those are great places to start. There can be more therapeutic supplements out there, but I like to cover the bases first. Let's work on nutrition, add a good multi, work on the omegas, and then we can get into some of these more calm focused supplements. So what about immune support supplements? Why am I even talking about immune support supplements? Well, when you're stressed, your immune system is suppressed. So it's really important to address the immune system as well as getting to the root cause of the stress. And I wanted to add in some really good immune support supplements that I've used with my kids and we've had great feedback on. 
first place to start would be a vitamin D. I think you've all heard at this point how important vitamin D is, D3 to be specific. If you're picking out a supplement, make sure it's D3, that's the active form. This is a great product. Carlson's vitamin D3 is wonderful because it's 400 IUs in one tiny little drop. So each little drop is 400 IUs and it's tasteless. So rather than adding a bunch of stuff and, and the kids have to take, you know, a teaspoon of it, they could just stick out their tongues and you could put a drop on there or you could add it into some applesauce or on a bite of food that they're about to eat. They won't notice that it's there. I, I would suggest not adding it into a big cup of liquid because that drop can get stuck to the side of the cup and uh, you wouldn't know if they were actually drinking in the vitamin D or not. So instead, add it on a bite of food, but it's wonderful. You can use it as well as an adult. You can triple or quadruple the dose if you need to and, and really cater it to whatever dose that you and the whole family needs. Everyone can do something different that lasts a long time. Like I said, it's tasteless. It's in a base of MCT oil. And I really like that product. Vitamin D is just so important for growth, bone development. It plays a huge role in the immune system, both in the innate immune system as well as with autoimmune, with a modulated system and, and helping to kind of balance things. So I think it's a really important one to make sure your kids have enough of. Vitamin C is another one of the basics. So you'll get some vitamin D and C in your multivitamin, but very often, as I mentioned, especially if it's a chewable multivitamin, there's just not enough to make a difference. So the Nature's Plus Animal Parade also makes a vitamin C that's chewable. It's orange flavored. It tastes really good. It's got 250 milligrams of vitamin C plus some whole food concentrates to help the absorption. So that's a great product if you're looking for a vitamin C. Black elderberry is another really wonderful immune product, and you can find it in a lot of different ways. We actually did a comparison at the store where we looked at different versions of elderberry. We looked at gummies, we looked at syrups, we looked at pills, and we found that the gummies were much, much less potent to the extent that with some of the brands, you'd have to take 10 to 14 to equate what you would get in a, a pill or a syrup. So try a syrup version first with your kids it's easy to take it tastes really good Gaia is all organic and they add a little bit of lemon juice and some honey to sweeten it to make it even more palatable but I find most kids really like the taste of an elderberry syrup and will willingly take it great for seasonal challenges black elderberry has some good research on especially viral issues and shorten the duration of the common cold so it's a good one to have in your cabinet I always have it on hand if my kids start they're rubbing their noses or getting sniffly or sore throats and make sure I get it in. Or you could use it preventatively and try to just give them a dose every day during, you know, those months when, when they need the most immune support. And Megafood makes a great product. It's Kids Daily Immune. It's a powder, so you could add it into their favorite drink. It's a combination of vitamin C, black elderberry. It also has astragalus and echinacea in it, which are two herbs that really have great immune support as well. It's all whole food, it's herbicide pesticide free, it's vegan. So another one of those products by Mega Food that's a great quality and packs a really good punch as an everyday immune booster. Like I said, you could add it to anything that they're eating or drinking. It does have, a, it doesn't quite dissolve all the way. So it's not one that I would say, just give it to your kids in water unless they don't care about the taste. But if they're, you're making them a smoothie, they'd never know it was there. So that's a really good one um, to add in. So lastly, I want to talk about purchasing supplements in general. Um, where can you purchase trusted supplements? I know it's easy to go to Amazon. I know that it's convenient, and you may think you're getting a better price. But I have actually had a client recently send me this, this picture. And if you look, these are the exact same product. These are both an algae-based omega-3 product. The one on the bottom was ordered direct from the company. The one on the top was ordered from Amazon. And if you look, there are these tiny, tiny little dots in there. That's actually a sign that the product has gone bad, that that product is actually rancid. It was well within expiration date, and it was sealed. But possibly how they stored it, or maybe someone tampered with the product, you don't know. So when you're buying it from a place like Amazon or another third party, you don't know what you're getting, but that's such a powerful image to me because if you actually take a product that's gone bad, 
it's harmful for you. And here you are trying to go out of your way, giving your kids something that's helping them. You don't want to mess with that and, and potentially give them something dangerous. So go to a trusted health store. I know at Vital Choice we have a very well-educated staff, including a naturopath. So finding some, some well-educated people at a local health store is important. Consult your holistic practitioner. You can get them direct from the supplement manufacturer, and, and they will, of course, be giving you the best version of the product because it's coming direct from them. But really try to avoid getting things off of these third-party sites such as Amazon. So what are the takeaways? We've talked about a lot. Getting rid of processed foods and sugars, eating as many nutrient-dense foods as possible, like vegetables, like berries, like good fats and nuts and seeds, drinking mostly water, and then consider supplementing to fill in gaps and providing additional support for your child. All of these things will really help reduce stress, help support their immune system, and give them the best chance of success for this year. So thank you, everyone, and enjoy the rest of the summer.